my god, it's so bright. Okay, that's a little better. I don't feel blinded anymore. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about how diet culture literally steals your time. Also, I have been wearing Hawaiian shirts all the time. I only have two of them, but they're so comfy and um, it's not because I'm moving to Hawaii that I'm suddenly always wearing Hawaiian shirts. I feel like that would be really tacky, but you know, I wouldn't put it past me. Anyways, this video topic is inspired by Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison. and She has a whole chapter in that book about how diet culture steals your time. Um, it's funny because I've been really getting into doing YouTube videos every week and I have like a Google Doc where I plan out every topic I'm gonna talk about, but I just found that like, I just get inspired like right before I'm about to do a video. Like I'll turn on my camera and be like, you know what? I actually don't wanna talk about that topic today. I have something else on my mind. And because I've been doing my book club where we read anti-diet, I was reading this chapter and I just really wanted to talk about it. So um, before we get into it, I think some backstory on dieting and diet studies is extremely necessary. So there was this guy named Dr. Albert Stunkard, I think that's how you say his name, um, and he was a researcher in weight loss science. And he had started in the late 1950s and he decided that he was gonna look at all the weight loss research and do a mass review of it all. And through this research, he found some pretty crazy flaws within a lot of the studies. So for one, most of the studies didn't even report the outcome of the treatment. And when they did, they tended to report the total amount of weight lost rather than what the individual participants had lost throughout the study. A lot of them failed to report the duration of the treatment. And if they did report it, it was a really small amount of time, which pretty much makes that study in insignificant for looking at long-term weight loss. And then a lot of the studies also didn't even account for people who had dropped out of the study. So when that happens, you're having flawed statistics because you're just looking at the people who stayed in the study. Um, so your numbers get skewed because you're not accounting for those people that had left. And he did actually end up finding about eight studies that were scientifically sound. And what they showed was that weight loss rarely even occurred. And it was actually more common for people to gain weight throughout the studies. So he was like, screw this, I'm doing my own study. And him and his team of researchers had 100 people go through a weight loss treatment. And what they found was that only two of the participants were able to maintain weight loss after the study. So then in 1992, the National Institute of Health actually did what Dr. Stunkard had done and they re-reviewed all of the weight loss science and they actually found the same results that he had found. They had found that 95% of diets don't work. So I want you to imagine if there was a 95% failure rate with literally anything else. Imagine if your car didn't start 95% of the time. Imagine if your internet connection didn't work 95% of the time. Imagine if there was a 95% of a major surgery going wrong. There would be class action lawsuits against these companies selling products that had a 95% failure rate against what they were trying to sell. Yet with diets, we still do them and then we end up blaming ourselves when they don't work. So diets don't work, yet they suck so much time and energy out of our lives. We know that losing weight doesn't fix body image because body image isn't actually about what your body looks like. It's the fact that we're placing worth on our bodies in the first place. We're convinced that when we finally lose the weight, then all of our problems in our life will be solved. And I'll just save you some time by letting you know weight loss doesn't solve your problems. In fact, it's way deeper than that. It's actually about how you value yourself as a person. It's about if you enjoy your life in general. It's about if you have a career that you feel like is fulfilling. It's about whether or not you have relationships that make you feel connected. Now, going back to time, I want you to think of all the time you've spent reading food labels when you're grocery shopping or looking them up online before you purchase something. Think of all the time you spent researching restaurant menus to make sure that your safe food was on the menu. Think of all the time you've spent feeling guilty and ashamed after eating something that wasn't allowed in your diet. Think of all the conversations and the moments and the memories that you missed out on because your head was so wrapped up in thinking about food and calories and exercise. Think of the hours that you've spent counting calories on 
calorie and macro tracking apps and the time you've spent planning meals for the next day to make sure it fits in with your calorie amount. Think of all the recipes you've had to look for that fit your diet and the time it took to find substitutes for ingredients that didn't fit your diet. Think of all the times you've tried starting a workout routine doing workouts that you don't even like and then having trouble staying consistent with it because it's not fun. Think of all the late night hangouts with your friends that you missed out on because you didn't want to miss your workout early the next morning. Think of all the events you completely avoided attending because you were afraid that you weren't going to be able to control yourself around the food that was going to be there. Think of all the time that you spent watching workout videos or reading about workout plans promising to give you the perfect body. Here's the truth. You do not need to do this. And if you're like, hey, Anna, I'm just concerned about my health. I want you to consider the fact that if your pursuit of health is mentally, emotionally, and physically draining and exhausting, it's not actually healthy. And weight loss does not automatically equal health. Engaging in movement you enjoy, eating a variety of food, feeling calm, secure, and peaceful around food, having relationships with people who love you unconditionally, being able to socialize without stressing out. These are things that actually improve your health. And I just wanna say it's not your fault if you've been trapped in this cycle. I've personally been there and I was seriously convinced that I would never get out of it. But I want you to consider what you're giving up in pursuit of the socially ideal body and consider that there's an alternative where you get your time back. Time to spend on your passions, time to spend with your loved ones, time to actually live before you die. So it's up to you. You can spend your time on something that's been proven to not work and doesn't actually bring you the freedom that it promises. Or you can try on something new for a change, something that gives you the freedom of time to do what you actually actually want to do with your life. And I want to ask you, what would you do with all that time? I know this stuff isn't easy. I know it's confusing. I know you're probably asking yourself like, what can I do? Where do I start? I'm trapped in this cycle. I don't know where to begin. If you follow me on Instagram at think outside the bod, I talk about this stuff a lot. You can DM me if you need any extra support. I love messaging you guys and answering any questions you have. And there are people out there whose job is dedicated to helping you heal your relationship with food and body. And that's what I do. I'm literally a food free and body image coach and I help people get to a place where they no longer obsess about food they get their time back they don't count calories anymore and they learn to eat intuitively and move their body in a way that's actually fun and fulfilling for them so if that's something you're interested in I'll link my website down below it's annawegnercoaching.com um, you can fill out a form to apply for a free discovery call if you're interested in coaching and we can talk about what it would look like um, and I can answer any pressing questions that you have and then we could see if we were a good fit for each other. I hope this was eye-opening. I hope this was helpful in seeing what's possible for you when you let go of diet culture. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. I will see you in the next video.